from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. This is the national broadcast coming to you live from the Rupuani studios. It's a bit chilly outside. It's chilly inside the newsroom too, but it's not for the good reasons. And we're ready to bring you those stories as well. Together with Lakshita Edirisinga, I'm Sharama Maskwinias. First, let's look at today's headlines. Air quality in various parts of the country, including Colombo City, has dropped. Several key cities in India are covered with toxic fumes. The appropriation bill for the year 2023 passes with a majority. President says electricity tariffs will have to be increased even amidst great difficulty. A deep depression in Bay of Bengal transforms into a cyclonic storm. Operations to rescue a child fallen into a bore well in Madhya Pradesh, India. On to those and other stories in detail, we start off with the top story for tonight. The air pollution level in several parts across the country, including Colombo City, increased up to a higher point. The health authorities have pointed out that the prevailed condition was not appropriate for vulnerable and sensitive, sensitive segments in the society. However, the prevailed air pollution subdued during the evening hours. An influx of dust particles contaminating Sri Lanka's atmosphere through strong northern winds from India caused the harmful polluted air quality in the country. The air pollution rate as per the air quality indicator in Colombo had exceeded 280 points this morning. The foggy or misty conditions observed these days in several parts across the country, including Colombo City, due to the increase in dust particles in the atmosphere, have created an unhealthy air quality. If the particle levels exceed the 300 mark, the atmosphere is deemed as extreme an air pollution condition. Accordingly, according to the U.S. Air Quality Index, the air quality in Colombo is a, a polluted level, which is unhealthy for the people. Such air pollution conditions occur each year and cascading haze smokes, which result in poor air quality, is caused mainly due to industrial pollution and stubble burning. However, unavailability of air quality indicators in other parts of the country has failed to determine the exact air quality levels accordingly. The health authorities have cautioned the public to wear face masks when outdoors and to keep windows and doors shut, preventing polluted air from entering the households. Now, the Secretary to the Environment Minister, Dr. Anija Singer, cautions children and the elderly with respiratory and heart diseases to wear face masks during outdoor activities. The Ministry of Environment has requested the public in Colombo, Kandy, Ratnapura, Jaffna and Vaunya districts to be cautious of high air pollution. Dr. Anil Jasingha, in an exclusive statement to the national television said that the present smog situation was not generated in the country. Of course, the air quality is in various parts of Sri Lanka has gone down. But of course, we have experienced uh, bad air quality as well, but not to this extent. And this is the first time that it has gone down to this extent. It's not a problem generated in Sri Lanka. A low pressure in the Bay of Bengal. Yeah, this has been coming to Sri Lanka from India, from New Delhi and other parts of India. And that is the reason for this poor quality of air yeah, when we talk about the poor quality of air we generally consider the particulate matter in fact uh, there are two main categories of uh, particulate matter 2.5 and 10 the pm of particulate matter 2.5 is more harmful to health than uh, 10 and this time what we see is that particulate matter 2.5 and 10 both has gone up and in fact has been indicated in many cities Sri Lanka that the PM has gone up so but we we believe that uh, the situation we will overcome by tomorrow or day after we believe because uh, it's not a permanent situation but anyway uh, this is not good and we call uh, this kind of pollution transboundary because this is limited to one country and you know even the solutions are uh, not national but uh, uh, regional and international 
and in this case uh, we cannot do much to mitigate this situation but of course we have to be precautious about this now for example the elderly children pregnant women and people with uh, heart problems and lung problems asthma allergic uh, conditions it, it is better for them to be in house as much as possible and whenever you go out uh, whether you are with those illnesses or not, uh, even if you are healthy if you go out it is better that you wear a mask and of course outdoor activities are not recommended during this period Now, air quality in India's financial hub of Mumbai today was worse than smog-filled national capital New Delhi, raising concerns of long-term health risks to people living in the country's two highly populated cities. Mumbai's air quality was very poor and is expected to remain the same for the next two or three days, government data showed. Residents were advised to stay indoors and avoid long walks, according to federal government website that charts air quality in Indian cities. India's capital, New Delhi, and its suburbs endure poor air every winter as colder, heavier air traps construction dust, vehicle emissions, and smoke from the burning of crop stubble in the nearby states of Punjab and Haryana. There have been a significant spike in air pollution levels in Chennai. This afternoon, the city's air quality index touched 240, which falls under poor category as per national ambient air quality standards. That condition is enough to cause breathing discomfort to most people on prolonged exposure. Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board officials attributed the sudden jump in pollution levels to unfavorable meteorological conditions. The depression over southeast Bay of Bengal has concentrated into a deep depression. The naval and fishing communities are advised not to venture into the deep sea, deep and shallow sea areas of the eastern and northeastern coasts. Cyclonic storm Manduos is likely to move west northwestwards and cross north Tamil Nadu. Puducherry and South Andhra Pradesh coast over the no southwest Bay of Bengal. Showers will occur at times in the northern, north, central and eastern provinces. Heavy rainfall above 100 mm can be expected at some places in northern province and Trincomalee district. Cloudy skies will prevail over most parts of the island. Under the influence of the cyclonic storm Manduos, the deep and shallow sea areas of northern and eastern coast will be rough to high with strong gusty winds and heavy rain today and tomorrow. Showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the sea areas of the coast, extending from Kankasanthare to Kothuville via Trincomalee and Batiklo. Forty houses in the Mere estate in Passara Divisional Secretariat Division have been damaged due to heavy winds. Meanwhile, another 20 houses have been severely damaged in Bibila area due to strong winds last night. Reports have indicated that the main road and several by roads have also been disrupted due to uprooting of trees. Several parts of Nuarelia district remained darkened due to the prevailing weather situation from this morning. Third reading of the budget 2023 was approved by a majority of 43 votes in parliament this evening. Accordingly, 123 parliamentarians voted in favour of the appropriation bill, while 80 voted against. Speaker Mind Deyapa Bevardhana announced the results of following a 13-day debate on the third reading of the Budget 2023. Parliamentarian C.V. Vigneshwaran and Velu Kumar abstained from voting. President Rani Vikramasinghe, in his capacity as the Minister of Finance, presented the appropriation bill for the year 2023 to Parliament on November 14. The 2023 budget is reportedly aimed at establishing long-term and stable economic growth. In the meantime, President Ranil Vikramasinghe says the safeguarding of the local banking system is essential to ensure the economic stability of the country. He made these remarks while addressing the parliament today. I think we'll all have to get together and think of how this financial sector is to be this day. We can blame each other. I can say I'm not responsible. But the fact is that we can't have the banks collapsing. So we come back to you, public finance and our banking. That's why I wanted the Banking Oversight Committee. It's a very serious problem and it will go for some time. And I want the House to be aware of it.
place over the taxation of the casino businesses in the country. Responding to a query raised by MP Dr. Harsha De Silva, the president said that the attention will be directed on the taxation of the online casino platforms. You are raising a very important point. I would like you to uh, take a look at the domestic debt exchange of Ghana, which is going into uh, force this week. Yeah. It's a voluntary exchange, sir. Mm. So they are actually addressing the elephant in the room. Mm. We are talking about all kinds of, uh, you know, issues, but we are not really addressing the domestic debt issue. Whether it is the, the banking sector, the how are we going to ring fence the banking sector and still sort of try to unwind this problem. So th this is a huge matter, so nobody is talking about okay, it. Okay, so let's, let's once we get on to this. The second is, I, I, read you, I, think I agree that we must have a new law to regulate the casinos. I think the Singapore law is something to watch and I'd like the House to draft the issues. Maybe public finance can send us a report on regulation of casinos here. Yes. That note, sir, I appreciate that because originally it was sent without a, a regulation. No, I know, I know. I so, know. Sir, so, so there is one thing, we, uh, we got them to agree to a 30th September deadline. Mm. So we hope they will keep to it because we are aware of the need for the casinos to come up, but the regulator must come up, sir, by the 30th yeah, yeah, of yeah, September. Yeah, yeah. Singapore has not only looked at the aspect of regulation, but also the health aspect. Which is, which is one thing that's good in it. And then what do we do with the Sri Lankans? Are they to enter the place or not? They have their fundamental rights. You can't ask the foreigners to come and not them. On the other hand, so there are many social issues also that I think we'll have to go into and give a full comprehensive report on how casinos and how many casinos can we bear. We can't have a casino at every petrol station. So we have to decide on how many casinos that we want to have. On that, there are so many casinos online, sir. You know. But the, the, none of them are paying any tax. Even as of today, hmm. there are a number of online casinos. So, we also told the finance ministry that they'll have to urgently bring amendment to the existing law so that you somehow register these online casinos. Because billions of rupees probably are lost because we don't collect no, I, 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 the single I to. tax. You know, maybe that's why I said I wanted the parliament to go into it come back with a comprehensive one which you all can do quickly and we can sort that out. So we have to go ahead. But I want you all to discuss it before we go ahead. How can you run a company if you don't know what your assets are? President Vikramasinghe, addressing the proposed electricity tariff hike said that such hard yet important decisions have to be taken to stabilize the economy. We have very, very difficult choices. I, no one here likes to take this choice. Either the economy breaks, the foreign, uh, the people are going to help us. Our bilateral creditors may not help us. We are in a really difficult situation. Who the politician who would like to raise this electricity by 50%? That's why you gave the job to me and no one else wanted it. So I had to take the way. But, uh, the president also made remarks over the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission. He is huh? conflict of interest. He conflict of interest. He should have disassociated himself from that meeting. He didn't do that. So people, they want me to have inquiry. But under the law, the power of inquiry lies with the parliament. So I will leave it for members of parliament to decide what has to be done. I don't think this type of thing can go on. You are the chairman of a public corporation, you must know how you behave. You are not a um, uh, monkey who dances into organ. 100 megawatts offshore wind power plant in Norwich Chole, 321 million dollars. 500 megawatt offshore wind power plant in Hambantota, 1.4 billion dollars. 100 million solar park Buffalo Island, Batiklo District, $68 million. 250 megawatt wind power plant, Dutch Bay, Putlam, US, $204 million. I would ask them first to pass this and then pass their resolutions against the increase of electricity tariffs. President Vikramasinghe, meanwhile, said that a parliamentary select committee will be appointed to probe into incorrect policies which led to the present economic crisis in the country.
MP Khabir Hashim inquired over the steps to be taken against the officials who are responsible for the current economic situation. Thank you, Khabir. Thank you. If the House agrees, I can appoint a presidential commission of inquiry or otherwise have a select committee, whichever you want, because House also has power to have a select committee. Huh? So you all come on a select committee, we are nothing uh, here. So you, you all decide on that. I don't think there's anything to hide. The, our system had a lot of structural defects which, which got triggered off by reducing the taxes. And I think the former, my predecessor, the former president has accepted that. But let's go into it and see what has happened and what the structural defects are because we must remedy them most. Now in other stories, President Rani Vikramasinghe says the attention will be directed to identifying the lands owned by the government for development purposes. The President made these remarks while addressing the Parliament today. President Rani Vikramasinghe said that in 1977, the government lands were under the authority of the Commission of Lands. He pointed out that the development during the period, the vast majority of the lands were allocated for various institutions, including Mahavali and Urban Development Authority. However, he emphasized that there are no information on such allocations and utilization of these assets. Therefore, he said that the government will now focus on identifying these lands and, if necessary, to reclaim through necessary procedures. Accordingly, he said that these measures will be taken under the divisional secretaries, but they will not be empowered to allocate properties at, the, at their discretion. Singapore and Sri Lanka discussed the early implementation of the Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement. Sri Lanka's State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tarka Balasuriya, who was on a short transit visit to Singapore on the 7th of December 2022, met with Singapore's Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of National Development, Sim An. The two ministers held wide-ranging discussions on augmenting bilateral relations with a specific focus on trade and investment cooperation between the two countries. In particular, the minister highlighted the intention of President Ranil Vikramasinghe to take measures to implement the Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement early. The minister was accompanied to the meetings by the High Commission of Sri Lanka to Singapore, Shashikala Prem Vardhana, and senior staff of the High Commission. In other stories, various parts organized protests in several parts of the country today. The protests were held to express displeasure on the budget 2023 and various other factors. State employees organized a demonstration campaign in front of the Ministry of Labor. Another protest was organized this afternoon by the State Sector Trade Unions and Multi-Public Organizations Collective. The protest was held in front of Setsiripaya. The junior staff of the National Hospital engaged in a strike from 7 a.m. to 12 noon today. Subsequently, the protesters engaged in a protest march up to the Ministry of Health and held a demonstration. Bank of Ceylon Employees Union also engaged in a protest at the Lake House Roundabout today. Another protest was organized in front of the Department of Government Printing today with the participation of its employees. Meanwhile, employees of Sri Lanka Telecom held a demonstration today in front of the Colombo Fort Railway Station. Director General of President's Trade Union Affairs, Saman Ratnapriya, said that state and semi-government employees had convened the protests today without any basis. The Election Commission says the notice to call for nominations to local government elections will be issued during the last week of this month. The Election Commission in a statement has further indicated that the relevant notice will be issued in accordance with the 26th section of the Local Government Elections Act. In the meantime, Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardana held a discussion with the ambassadors of member countries of the European Union at the Temple Trees yesterday. 
The Prime Minister briefed them on the steps taken by the government with regard to establishing economic, social and political stability and the results thereof. The envoys who took part in the discussion included European Union Ambassador Denny Scheibe, Ambassador of Germany Holger Schubert, Ambassador of the Netherlands Bonnie Horbach, Ambassador of France Jean-François Pacte and Charge d'Affaires of Embassy of Romania Victor Tiwia. Secretary to the Prime Minister Anurad Dissanayake also attended the meeting. The Indian Parliament time-to-time -time debate over Sri Lanka and its bilateral relations. Accordingly, India's External Affairs Minister Jai Shankar responded to queries raised over Sri Lanka in Parliament. Sir, Vaikoji's uh, two uh, questions. One about our abstention in the UN Human Rights Commission. This has been a long-standing position by India, keeping in mind what not just this government, but its predecessor governments have also thought is the most constructive way of addressing and uh, advancing the interests of the Tamil community in Sri Lanka. That continues to be uh, our approach. Regarding the support we have given to Sri Lanka, please, uh, uh, I would request the Honorable Member to appreciate. We have given support to the entirety of Sri Lanka, which also includes the Tamil community, the Sinhalese community, the other communities. So it, we have not taken uh, uh, a communal approach to giving support. They, uh, to have a neighbor in this kind of serious economic situation, we would be shirking our responsibilities if we did not step forward at that moment. And that is exactly uh, what uh, we have done. With that, we take a look at a few more local stories in brief. Navalapitiya Railway Control Centre has announced that the upcountry railway operations have been normalised, which was interrupted due to a derailment. The Badula Kalambo nightmare train derailed between Nanue and Great Western Railway stations yesterday. Accordingly, the operations along the railway line were disrupted until this morning. Badula Kalambo train was stopped at the Hatton Railway Station from 3 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eight Indian fishermen, along with contrabands, have been taken into custody by Sri Lanka Navy. They were taken into custody while attempting to transport the contrabands hidden in a boat to Kalpitiya area. The value of the contrabands is at 35 million rupees. The special task force has taken two suspects into custody along with the ice drug in their possession. Accordingly, the arrests were made during a raid carried out near the Mithotamula railway crossing. Valampitiya police have said that the suspects have been identified as associates of alleged drug dealer Mithotamula Devi. The resident in Katuan, Gamage Rukant Gunatilaka, has been able to secure a world record by running 54 wheel tractors over his body and bashing 54 concrete blocks with a sledgehammer on top of his body in a period of one minute. Meanwhile, the first ever mobile app designed for state, private, and semi government employees was unveiled today. The employees in various sectors have the ability to broaden their knowledge using this app. Over 8 million are currently engaged in employment in various industries and sectors. This mobile app was designed by the Free Trade Zone and General Services Employees Union and Women's Centre. Stay tuned with us for news from overseas coming your way after this short break. <laughs> Look at foreign news now. A massive rescue operation in India is underway to save an eight year old boy who has been stuck in Borwell for over a day. The incident took place in the central state of Madhya Pradesh on Tuesday around 5 pm when eight year old Tanmay fell into the narrow well while playing with his friends. As per the rescue officials, the child is stuck at nearly 55 feet in the 400 feet deep well. The officials are pumping oxygen to the child, but due to the layers of mud, the rescue parties are unable to assess his condition. Currently, the state's disaster response is helping in the rescue efforts. The machines have so far dug nearly 25 feet deep parallel tunnel. 
Several children in India have died due to suffocation after getting stuck in bore wells. The most ancient DNA ever sequence reveals what the Arctic looked like two million years ago when it was warmer. Today, the area in North Greenland is a popular desert, but the genetic material extracted from soil has uncovered a rich array of plants and animals. The scientists found genetic traces of elephant-like mastodons, reindeer and geese that roamed among the birch and polar trees and a marine life, including horseshoe crabs and algae. Dina Bulate has been sworn in as Peru's new president after left-wing leader Pedro Castillo was removed in an impeachment trial and arrested following his attempt to illegally shut down the Congress. The opposition-led legislature on overwhelmingly voted in favor of removing Castillo yesterday, who earlier in the day had announced plans to temporarily dissolve the legislature and rule by decree. Castillo has said the move aimed to re-establish the rule of law and democracy in Peru, but it was widely condemned by opposition leaders and others, including Bularte, his vice president, as an attempted coup. Congress asked 60-year-old Bularte to take over following its impeachment vote, making her the first woman to lead the South American nation. And on sports news, the quarter-final round of the FIFA World Cup 2022 begins tomorrow. Accordingly, four matches will be played during this round. That's it. That's a look at Rupani News for tonight. Don't forget to wear a mask if you're heading outdoors. Take care. Good night.